Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on the acidic environment module of year 12 chemistry. So in this series, we're going to start looking at a topic called esters. Okay, We're going to look at what an ester is, um, how do we make them, what are their uses, and also how to name them correctly. Okay? So that's what we're going to focus on in this series. Okay? So today's lesson will be on alkanols and alkanoic acids. <laughs> this might seem like a just a jump out out of left field because we just said we're going to talk about esters. Well, before we can talk about esters, we need to talk about alkanols and alkanoic acids um, just to uh, sort of prime ourselves for uh, ester esterification and esters. Okay, So we're going to talk about these guys first. So an alkanol first. These should be familiar from production of materials, so you should know what an alkanol is, but they're a very common class of chemical and they're used very frequently in industry. Uh, not just the alcohol industry, um, they're used outside of that like perfume industry as well as um, in many other chemical industries that require solvents. Okay. The distinguishing feature of an alkanol is the hydroxyl group um, or hydroxyl functional group. Okay. So what that means is, is the OH group here. And you might be wondering why I've drawn this diagram like I have, what, what, what in the heck is R? Well, R is just a methyl, is an, sorry, is an alkyl group, any alkyl group. So it's a chain of C's missing one hydrogen, okay? And which means that it can bond to another C. It's just a general A of writing um, an alkanol, so I don't have to write, you know, I don't have to be specific and write one type of alkanol, and I don't have to, you know, write thousands and thousands of different alkanols as well. So it's just a al any alkyl group, so any chain of carbons missing one hydrogen. Okay, so just be aware of that what that is. Okay, so function so the OH functional group is what defines an alkanol. So if you have this OH guy, you are doing well. Okay, you're an alkanol. So the applications of alkanols, due to the OH functional group, alkanols can dissolve both polar and nonpolar substances. So again, you should have seen this sort of from production of materials. Ethanol could dissolve lots of different things. Uh, most alkanols can dissolve polar and nonpolar substances, depending on how long the chain is. If it's like dodeca dodecanol, um, you know, with one OH down here, and like, you know, a chain of carbons 10, 12 long, it's not going to be very good at dissolving in polar substances. But, of course, if it's a small chain like ethanol, it can dissolve in both polar and non-polar substances. So just be aware that the chain length does um, throw some spanners in the works, but most alkanols can go polar or non-polar substances. Okay? Now, because a lot of them can dissolve both polar and non-polar substances, it makes them really heavily used as industrial solvents. Okay? So lots of different chemicals can dissolve in them. So the chemical industry tends to use alkanols as solvents. Okay? And the perfume industry is just one example of them. The fragrances, the smells in perfume are all long chain hydrocarbons. And so ethanol is a good way of dissolving it with other chemicals like water and things to make sure that you can spray it and you know it doesn't hurt you or anything. So that's one example of an alcohol as a solvent. Now, short chain alkanols like ethanol and methanol are exceptionally good fuels. So here we have methanol being pumped into a car. Um, they're very, very good fuels. Um, they're just really underutilized in our current industry. And a lot of people don't like alcohol fuels, um, but I think they're just super. They're very, very good fuels. If you're a Formula One fan, um, you probably know this already, but the Formula One cars all drive on methanol. Um, and they run very, very well on methanol, obviously. So short-chain alkanols can make very good fuels. And alcohols are also used in preservation applications. So if, for instance, preserving foods, things like that, um, you can also have alco alcohols working there. Okay. So an alkanoic acid, what about this guy? So alkanoic acids or carboxylic acids possess a carboxyl group, okay, which is COOH bonded to another chain. So here we have the same notation as I did in the alcohol um, group. You have R, which is, remember, an alkyl group, a chain missing one hydrogen, um, with C double bond O and OH. 
Okay, so it looks very similar to alcohol, except instead of hydrogens, you've got a double bond O. Okay, make sense? So you can see that instead of having two hydrogens here, you've just got double bond O. Okay. This carboxyl group can donate protons to the solution, making these substances acidic. So this H here can actually be donated to solution, which obviously means that's an acid, which makes sense because it's called an alkanoic acid. Okay. So often we see this used in industrial polymers. So there's a polymer called polyester. Uh, surely you've seen it by now as a year 12 student. Polyester is a chemical is a fabric, and it comes from, from these alkanoic acids. Okay? So one of the components is alkanoic acids. Okay? Acetic acid, or vinegar, also called ethanoic acid, is used in food preparation. Okay? So vinegar is used to preserve foods. Oh, sorry, not food preparation, food preservation, sorry. Um, so they, it's used to preserve foods. Pickling um, is a type of vinegar, uh, is, what, is one application of vinegar to um, preserve food. So many alkanoic acids are used as industrial solvents as well. So you can use alkanoic acids as solvents as well, okay, as alkanols. Okay, so here we have a comparison of the two, the differences between alkanols and alkanoic acids. So obviously the main difference is the functional group. Okay, so these R's could be identical, but obviously they'll still have very different properties if you've got a different functional group, okay? So due to the OH functional group, alkanols are partially polar and are likely soluble in water, whereas the carboxylic functional group also makes the alkanoic acid soluble. So they're both soluble in water because they're both polar. You can see this is polar, and this may be slightly polar, and this is definitely polar. Okay? So there's polar parts, which means that it's probably soluble in water, um, with, you know, obviously if there's long chains, maybe not. The carboxyl group can donate protons, making it an acidic functional group. So this can actually go away, be added to solution, and become an acid. Whereas alkanols, it's not, um, this can't actually go, be given away, can't be donated. Um, the reason is because the electron bond here actually kind of resonates. So it can, kind of can be here sometimes, and it can be here, which makes this bond very weak. Um, Whereas this one, the bond can only be in one place. So it makes the bond slightly stronger. That's why this group can donate hydrogen, whereas this group cannot, because the bond is slightly stronger for certain reasons. Okay? Okay, so what about naming them? How do we name these alkanols and alkanoic acids? Well, just like alkanes and alkenes, alkanols and alkanoic acids are named after their longest carbon chain. Okay, so take the longest chain, and that is the first part of your name. Alkanols are given names like methanol, ethanol, 1-propanol, 2-propanol, etc., etc. Okay. And alkanoic acids are often given names like methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, and propanoic acid. Okay. So there's just many things. Um, we'll go in more depth about how to name them um, in future lessons, so don't worry too much yet. But the naming convention is pretty similar to how alkanes and alkenes work. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a future lesson. So that concludes today's lesson on alkanols and alkanoic acids. We looked at what an alkanol is, what an alkanoic acid is, what are the differences between the two, and what are the applications of each one. So I think you've learned something, and we'll move on to the question segment now to try and reinforce that knowledge. Okay, question one. Which of the following is not a correct statement about alkanoic acids. So the functional group of an alkanoic acid is the carboxyl group. That's true. So um, that's not our answer. We're looking for the false one, so that's true. Alkanoic acids are nonpolar substances. That's probably false, but there are nonpolar parts. So maybe we'll maybe if there's a worse answer, we'll we'll go to that, but for now we'll just leave that. That's our worst answer so far. Alkanoic acids have the general formula RCOOH, where R is a saturated carbon chain with general formula CnH2n plus 1. Yes, that's true. Um, the reason why it's CnH2n plus 1 is because an alkyl group is an alkane minus 1 hydrogen, 
and an alkane is given C2H2N plus 2. Okay? So you can see this is one less hydrogen than this one. So it's an alkyl group. Okay, so C is correct. So it's not the ink, it's not false. So it can't be our answer. The boiling points of alkanoic acids are higher than alkanols of the same of similar chain length. That is actually also true. So B is the worst answer. So B is the answer that we're going to pick. Okay. Explain why both alkanols and alkanoic acids are often used as industrial solvents. Okay. So hopefully from production of materials you've seen why this is true, but we'll just keep reinforcing it um, because it's important. Well, both alkanols and alkanoic acids display polar and nonpolar ends. So the alkyl group is nonpolar, whereas the carboxyl or um, alcohol group, OH, hydroxyl group, sorry, is, are both polar. This allows both groups of chemicals to dissolve both nonpolar and polar substances. So alkanols and alkanoic acids can both dissolve nonpolar and polar substances. The ability to dissolve both types of chemicals makes alkanols and alkanoic acids ideal solvents for industry. Okay? Because if I can dissolve both nonpolar and polar substances with the same chemical, I might as well do so. It saves me having to buy another chemical. So that's why often they're used as industrial solvents, because they can be applied to many different chemicals rather than just one. Okay? Okay, write the systematic name for the following mo molecule. So we need the name. Okay. So first we count out the longest carbon chain. Now it's very tempting to say it's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Very, very tempting to say that. But the chain is still goes on one. You can see it just, just bends at 90 degrees. The chain hasn't been broken, hasn't stopped, um, and I haven't had to go back the other way. So it's actually seven carbons long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so there's seven carbons in this chain. Because I haven't had to go back to change direction. So it's just one direction like that. Okay. Now, are there any functional groups? Yes, there's one here. This may look like a functional group, but it's not. Because it's just C like this. So it's just like any other, any other of the carbons. Okay. So this is not a functional group, whereas this is. So we just count out um, which one it is. So we could count it this way, one, two, three. So three is a pretty high number, so I'm not a big fan of three. Let's try counting the other way. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Five is obviously a higher number than three, so we count this way. So one, two, three. So the final answer is three um, propanol. Oh, sorry, 3 heptanol. So hept is for the 7 carbons. Tanol is because it's an alcohol group, so it's heptanol. And the, the hydroxyl group is on the third carbon, so it's 3 heptanol. Okay? And there's our answer. So you just have to apply the same naming conventions that you would um, in any other parts of chemistry. Okay, draw the structural formula for pentanoic acid. Okay, so pent is five carbons long. Okay. Now, the question is pentanoic acid. Where can the double bond O go? Well, it can only go in one place at the end. Because you can't put a double bond here and then an OH here because that would be too many bonds. There's five bonds there. So obviously you can't do that. So it can only go in one place, the end. Could go on this end or this end, but that doesn't matter. It could, it'll be the same. So, and then the remaining hydrogens have to go in. Okay, and that's it. Pent five, anoic acid. You've got an alkanoic acid group at the end. Pentanoic acid. Okay, and as you can see, it's exactly the same. Except it's in white, obviously, and my one's in black. Okay, very good. So explain why alkanoic acids are used as food preservatives. Okay. Well, the acidic nature of alkanoic acids inhibits the growth of microorganisms. 
Many other chemicals can be used for this purpose. However, alkanoic acids are generally safe to consume because they're weak acids. This makes them the ideal chemical to preserve foods with. So they're weak acids, which means we can consume them. Um, and they also kill bacteria. Okay? And they discovered this you know, long ago, back in the old times. Um, and that's why we've de uh, developed a taste for you know, pickled foods, because over time people have been eating them because they know it's at least sanitary, so they can eat it and not get sick. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on alkanols and alkanoic acids. We looked at alkanols and alkanoic acids, what they were, what were they, how were they different from one another, and what were their applications in industry. So hopefully you've learned something. And the next few lessons, we'll be looking at how they relate to esters. Okay? So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.